Welcome to Vignan Group. This is 7th video on magnetic effects of electric current of class 5 CBSC physics section. Okay, in the last video we understood about electromagnetic induction. And before going to the topic of the last video, what was the question I asked in the last video? I asked how was the homemade galvanometer which we used in that video was working as a galvanometer. So this was the one homemade galvanometer. How, how is it working like a galvanometer? So the answer is see, you can see that this is actually a compass, 100 meter moves copper wire in a circular form, insulated copper wire, many turns. So this works like a circular loop around the compass. So when the current flows through this circular loop, a magnetic field is in, created and this compass detects that magnetic field and shows the deflection. Now whenever the current flows through this, this will magnetic, uh, it will detect the magnetic field and show deflection. In turn it just works like a galvanometer and detects the presence of current. This is the answer for the question I had asked in the last video. In this video, we are going to understand the most interesting topic that is generator. And one more rule which is called as generator rule also we learn. So, let us start. So, first what is a generator is simply based on the principle of electromagnetic induction. So, what is electromagnetic induction? So, changing magnetic field in the conductor induces electric current in another con conductor which is called as electromagnetic induction. So, now if there is a change in magnetic field and because of that a current is induced, we should know the direction in which current is induced, right? So, for that also we have a simple rule. Yes, of course, this is also called Fleming's rule. We have already used our left hand, so which hand is left now? Now only right hand we have. So, this is called as Fleming's right hand rule. And this is very simple like the earlier. And like earlier, now also we have to stretch all the three fingers of that is middle finger, forefinger, thumb of our right hand perpendicular, mutually perpendicular to each other because the experiments have shown that that is when this induced current will have highest, induced current will be highest. So in this way, that is, see, this, in this way you have to stretch your right hand then you already know first let us come with this hand this finger so this is four finger four finger represents what yes four finger represents magnetic field now this here also four finger represents magnetic field and the thumb is, represents motion of conductor so then our middle finger represents the direction of induced current understood so, if the magnetic field is in this direction, then if the conductor is moving in this direction, then the current will be induced in this direction. So, let us say, if the magnetic field is, if the motion of the conductor is in this direction, then the current will be induced in the opposite direction. Now, let us see like this. Understood? I think, let, if I change the position, and now you see here also, now, if the magnetic field is in this direction and if the four, uh, motion of the conductor is in this direction, then the current induced will be in this direction. I hope you understood this Fleming's right hand rule. So, this is the, this is mainly used in generators. So, it is also called as generator rule. So, I am telling you all about this generator and we are still not going to generator, right? Yeah, this is time to jump into generator now. Next, so we already understood about Fleming's right hand rule. Now, see, we already know how electricity is generated, right? Mainly electricity is generated in three ways. Either through hydroelectricity or through wind energy or else through nuclear power reactors, right? In all the three situations, in all these cases, electricity is produced by rotating big turbines like this, okay? And in case of uh, hydroelectricity, these turbines are rotated by flowing water. In case of wind energy, these turbines are rotated by blowing wind. And in nuclear power station, these turbines are rotated using steam, okay? So, here we are using energy to rotate the turbines. So, what kind of energy it is? It 
is called as yes mechanical energy in the mechanical energy its moving means its kinetic energy so this turbine is producing kinetic energy and then this kinetic energy of the turbine is converted into electrical energy and which is a device which device we use to convert this uh, kinetic energy to electrical energy that is this kinetic energy is a type of mechanical energy to electrical energy the device which is used to convert this kinetic energy mechanical energy to electrical energy is called generator now understood how important generators are now let us understand how this generator converts mechanical energy into electrical energy with the help of a 3d model so you have already understood generator and its application now let us see a 3d model of generator and understand so basic principle of generator is you already know it's electromagnetic induction so what is electromagnetic induction to tell you simply it's just that that if you keep a copper wire or any conductor in the magnetic field and move it a little bit then a current is induced in a conductor so it's a aluminium one which is a conductor if i keep this in the magnetic field and move it little bit like this a current will be induced in this conductor this is the principle of electromagnetic induction here instead of using a single copper wire a single conductor we are using something called as armature because we want more current so and on this armature we have used many terms of copper wire we armature you might be knowing from the motor one right so actually this uh, let us come to the construction of this ac generator yeah this is called as ac generator there we had dc motor and this is ac generator what is ac alternating current what is alternating current we will understand later okay now this has actually five part the first part is n and s two poles of a powerful bar magnet and then next comes the same thing armature and then this armature there now the first difference between motor and generator comes there we had a split ring here we have here we have this is called as slip rings these are complete rings you can see them and then again like the earlier they are connected to two carbon pressure so this so let me keep it like this it will be easy to understand so so this is connected to b1 and this the carbon brush b1 and this another slip ring is connected to carbon brush b2 and both of them are in turn connected to a galvanometer there we had it connected it to a battery here we are connected into a galvanometer why because here what's the function of this generator to convert mechanical energy to electrical energy so we are giving mechanical energy and the output will be electrical energy so how to find the presence of current using something called as galvanometer galvanometer is the instrument which detects the presence of current so that's why we have connected a galvanometer here now we have to supply mechanical energy for this this is what this is about the construction of this ac generator now let us see how it works okay now as i told you we have to provide mechanical energy how is this mechanical energy is provided mechanical energy is provided actually three ways yeah i told you know either by hydroelectricity or by wind energy or by nuclear power reactor that is through the steam using that turbines are rotated in turn the turbines will rotate this thing which is called as axle okay so let us see how it works so let us say in the beginning axle is rotated in clockwise direction so this has to be rotated clockwise that means this part of the armature will go up and how, where is what is the direction of induced current for that we have to use which rule yes remix right hand rule so in which direction the conductor is moving upper side so this is like this and in, 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 which is the direction of magnetic field this one so the current is induced in this direction towards me current is induced in this direction so when this moves up for this part of the armature current is induced in this direction so current starts flowing in this direction now for this part of the armature this is this will actually go down right so now the 
moment of the conductor is in downward. So now the four current will be flowing in this direction. Correct? Now because this is going downwards, it will be like this. For this part of the armature, current will be induced in this direction. Right? Now the current will flow like this and for this part of the armature, like this, after that it will come to the brush. This split ring is connected to the brush B2, B2 and to the galvanometer then comes to the B1. So in the external circuit, current flows in the direction B2 to B1. Right? Now, huh, okay, this will move like this. This will go up and now, now after half cycle, what's happening? Now still this split ring is connected with B2 and this split ring is connected with B1. No change there. But what's the change is, now we are giving half rotation is over. Now again we are giving mechanical energy so this has to complete one full rotation. So now this part of the armature which was moving up earlier, this should come down. So that means again the movement of the conductor is downwards, magnetic field is in this direction. So the current will flow in this direction. For this part earlier which was in which the direction was in this uh, direction of current was in this direction. Now the direction of the current will be in this direction. Now for this part of the armature which will move up to now. Again the Moment of conductor this direction, magnetic field this direction, so the current will flow in this direction. So the current direction will be like this. It will move like this, come like this, and in the external circuit, now you see current will flow from B1 to B2. Earlier it was from B2 to B1, now from B1 to B2. Now for each half cycle, this direction of the current get reversed in the external circuit. So it alternates in the external circuit. So it is called as, this current is called as alternating current. Understood? Now let us say this again completes one full cycle. Now again same thing what we understood there. So now again current will be, this will move up. So the current magnetic field like this. So current direction will be like this. For this again, see magnetic field like this. And this will move down. So current direction like this. So here again B2 to B1 again one half cycle, one half cycle, one far one half cycle again from now what happens again this should move down. Now the current direction for here this side. So again the current direction will be now B1 to B2. So like this it keeps on rotating converting mechanical energy into electrical energy. So this device is called as generator used to convert mechanical energy into electrical energy. This is the working of a AC generator. So this is a wooden board. On the wooden board I have placed two pulleys. One is a smaller pulley, another one is a bigger pulley. Both the pulleys are connected by a rubber band. This pulley, the bigger pulley is connected to a wooden board and the smaller pulley is connected to a DC motor, another end of DC motor is connected to an LED here. So when I give mechanical energy, you can see that this mechanical energy, this is a type of mechanical energy that is kinetic energy. Kinetic energy is converted into electrical energy here. So LED is glowing, showing that this mechanical energy is converted into electrical energy. This is how a generator works, converts a mechanical energy into electrical energy. So you saw the experiment, enjoyed the experiment. So what all we learned in this video? So first we learned about that means right hand rule. Actually there are three rules in this whole lesson. Don't get confused between all the three, okay? They all are very very important from your examination point of view. Let us quickly have uh, just recap of all the three rules so that we can distinguish between them very easily. The first rule you learned was right hand grip rule, okay? So this grip rule it is you in this grip roll there are only two components you can see so one is the current carrying conductor and the other one is only magnetic field in the second one we, we learned was Fleming's left hand roll here you have three components which are the three components magnetic field 
electric field and the force acting on the conductor. So three fields. Again, now in this video, we learned that Fleming's right hand rule. In the right hand rule, also how many components are there? Again, three components. Three components again. See, here also magnetic field was in the fourth finger. Here also in the same finger, magnetic field. And instead of the current here, here it was current. Here instead of the current, we have induced current here. Here this was for force. Instead of force, this is for the motion of the conductor. That's the only difference. So this is the difference between all the three. Let us have understand a small trick to distinguish between all the three. Okay. So first is right hand grip rule. In this right hand grip rule, they will normally ask the direction of magnetic field. Okay. So remember, induced current means you should use which rule? From its right hand rule. So which finger represent induced current? Yes, this finger represents induced current. And if they ask for force acting on a conductor, then you should go for yes, that means left hand rule. This is a small trick. Remember, magnetic field lines, current carrying conductor, and magnetic field and only then, then grip rule. Induced current, yes, right hand rule. And the force acting on a conductor, left hand rule. This is easy way to distinguish between all the three. I hope it helps you. So actually we are coming to the last part of this whole lesson, okay. There is actually only one part left which is going to be domestic electric circuits which is going to be the next video. It will be the last video on magnetic effects of electric current. So now actually I have to ask you a question of this video, right. So the question is, see we used the DC motor. You saw the experiment which we conducted. There we used a DC motor to convert mechanical energy to electrical energy. But what's the function of a motor? Yes, actually motor converts electrical energy to mechanical energy. But in this case, in the experiment, it is used to convert mechanical energy to in the opposite direction, mechanical to electrical. So how a DC motor is working like a generator, converting mechanical energy to electrical energy? That's my question. How a DC motor is working like a generator? That you have to explain how it works like a generator. Okay, that's my question. So if you know the answer, please feel free to comment in the comment section. If you have any doubts, you can ask in the comment section and click the bell icon for further updates. Thank you.